Since 1973, Tattoo Charlie's has been an established body modification studio in Kentucky. Featuring world-renowned artists and piercers, currently with locations on Preston Highway and in Lexington. A staple point in the tattoo community. Learn more at TattooCharlie's.com. Set up your appointment today at 7904 Preston Highway. Our tattoos are done while you wait. Hey, are you all in a band? Do you need merch for shows? By now I'm sure you've seen all the Metal Forge patches that are available, along with many more. Well, the printer I use for those is UKR Patcher. Check them out on Facebook and Etsy. They do awesome custom work and for extremely affordable prices for any band budget. Check them out, UKR Patcher on Facebook and Etsy. Hey everyone, do you play tabletop games like D&D and Pathfinder? Well, hit up Eric at Imagination Studios. Uh, they do custom printing for all your minis for gameplay. Don't forget, they are a licensed Reaper, Artisan Guild, and more printer and dealer. Hit up ImaginationStudios502.com for more info. That's ImaginationStudios502.com. E-M-A-G-I-N-A-T-I-O-N Studios502.com. Thank you for tuning in to The Metal Forge. I am Mark Jackson, and I am your host. The premise of the show is pretty simple. Awesome interviews and awesome music. If you want to contact me, hit me up at metalforgeradio at gmail.com or visit the website metalforgeradio.com. And now, let's get this show on the road. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in today. I'm Mark, your host. It is Friday, May 22nd, and dropping at midnight. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's because Vanek is on the show today, and that was pretty fucking cool. Uh, awesome dude. Uh, I think you all are going to like it. Uh, not going to do much here in the monologue today. Just um, just a few shout-outs to the people who are uh, subscribing on Patreon. I appreciate it. Uh, your stuff is in the mail. Uh, that you're going to be receiving awesome shit. Uh, if you don't know, uh, go over to patreoncom slash metal forge radio. Uh, there's the down and dirty dollar tier. Um, then there's five, 10, uh, 20, and I think, uh, 50. Um, yeah, just go in and check some of that stuff out. You know, there's hoodies, there's t-shirts, there's patches, uh, all kinds of shit that you can do for being a subscriber. Uh, or a donor, I should say. And every little bit helps. So thank you all for the people who did uh, subscribe to that. Uh, there's not many, but thank you all anyways. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to Eric at ImaginationStudios502.com. Uh, you heard their intro, uh, their commercial on the intro here. Uh, awesome dude. Uh, he printed me, he 3D printed me a uh, COVID-19 protection mask of the dark one, uh, Lord Vader. Uh, you should see pictures of that, uh, on Instagram, uh, just, you know, being goofy and it works, it helps. And I, I urge everybody to wear a mask out there because, you know, it's protecting you and it's protecting others. So thank you to Eric for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm going to play some, uh, I want to play three different bands, that Vanek is a part of on today's show. I want to play a song from Midnight. I want to play a song from Vanek. And I'm going to play a song from Vandalis. So we might cut the interview in the middle somewhere and play a song and come back. You know, um, I'm trying to, you know, do new things here. I want to, you know, I want to have... Uh, a little bit of a different feel each show, uh, make, you know, asking different questions, which I am now incorporating. The fan question of the week, if you get onto the uh, Metal Forge Radio Facebook page uh, and the Metal Forge Radio Instagram, uh, when I announce who's going to be on the show, if you all want to ask a question, just shoot me a message. Shoot me an email, metalforgeradio at gmail.com and uh, say question of the week or something. And... Whoever I pick it from can get free swag, you know, whether it be a patch or some stickers or something. Uh, yeah, you know, so uh, do that because I like sending out free shit to people because it's fun and I enjoy talking to you guys, you know, 
I really do. And if you have any suggestions for the show, um, let me know. I mean, shit, shoot me an email. I'm, I'm here for that. You know, I have fun with you guys. I appreciate all you all who listen and every, every band who comes on and wants to be a part of the show. So, you know, be looking forward to the next couple of weeks. I've got uh, Black Knife from Lexington, Kentucky. And I have uh, Fatal Curse from Monrovia, New York. And coming up, I will be having Idle Hands from uh, Portland, Oregon. And they actually just toured last year with King Diamond. So that's really going to be fun. Uh going to talk with Gabe on there. It'll be awesome, I'm sure. Uh, he seems like a pretty cool dude. But yeah, so hopefully you all are digging the shows. I love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for staying safe so you can listen every week. As I said earlier, I'm going to be playing a few different songs. Let's hear the Vanek tune. This is one more dose. And I'm being joined on the phone right now from Vanek from Midnight Vanek Vandalis. Holy What's God. up, dude? What is up with you? How are you today? Hey, I'm good, man. I'm just sitting in my garage right now. Don't know why. It's raining. Feels good though. Are you writing an album? No, I'm just kind of <laughs> fucking around with some props and whatnot. I don't know. Just tinkering. Yeah, stupid I, shit I normally do. I saw some of the posts on Facebook a few weeks back where you know you were making the masks and everything on there. That I thought that was super fucking cool, dude. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I enjoy the shit. You know, I grew up a buddy of mine down the street. You know, his brothers started like a haunted yard where they'd have people walk through, and then at some point, my buddy and myself we took it over and then we started doing it. So I've always been into that whole Halloween bullshit, making masks, props, whatever. So it just kind of stuck with me. I'm not any good. I just enjoy it. So. Nah, dude, from the stuff that I saw, like the prototype stuff, I thought it was pretty fucking killer looking. I appreciate it. You know, it. Thank the, you. like the Nosferatu face, you know, the vampire. Uh, total awesomeness. Uh, yeah. There's cool. actually a street in the Highlands area of Louisville that the entire street does, and it's, uh, it's uh, Halloween on Hillcrest, and it's so cool because every oh, single nice. house down the street has some big elaborate 
set up in their front yards. That's so. killer. I mean, because like my we had it worked out perfect because it was like in a cul-de-sac area, you know, with a, there's a circle. So it was my buddy's house. His grandma lived next door, and their neighbor was super cool. He actually worked in it too. He helped. So it was like a, you know, had like three yards combined, and it was super cool. You know, it was almost like going to the neighborhood. And it took like 15, 20 minutes to get to the 100 yards, so it was awesome. Dude, that's killer. Uh, yeah. That, that's so cool. And anytime you can do stuff like that community-based is is always fucking awesome to me. So, Yeah, hell yeah. So tell us about, I mean, most people know about Midnight. Sure. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about, you know, where where did you come, where did it come from? Um. Well, I mean, you know, Midnight is... Um, Athenar's baby but you know I've known him I've known him for a long time because you know we're all pretty much in the same area um you know he lives probably about 45 minutes to an hour from here but anyway he used to be in a band called Destructor and that's how I met him and then right with Dave Overkill over the, yeah yeah totally I mean it's I mean we we're kind of tight with the Cleveland metal scene with you know Destructor Breaker the Manimals um Shock Pierce. I mean, there's there's a ton. I you know I'm not even gonna go through them all, but um, I don't know. At some point in two, you know, it was back in 2012, I was in a studio uh, mixing another record I was working on, and he popped in, and we just started talking, and it just kind of went on from there. You know, he's like, dude, you should jam in Midnight. I'm like, okay. I've seen Midnight too before I even started playing, so um, yeah, it was I was, it was like inspiring to see. Absolutely. And you know, you all play with the with the masks on. I'm friends with the people in Savage Master and they have eye holes cut in theirs. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean, y'all's are all black. Does it make it difficult on stage? You, you know, honestly, I really like zone out a lot of times. Sometimes people are like, "Dude, you remember doing this?" I'm like, "I have no fucking clue what you're talking about. I just kind of go with the flow." <laughs> But, um, you know, I, again, I don't think about it, but the only time it gets a little scary is like when the sh- lights are just totally black, there's no lights. I'm like, Oh fuck. And, and it usually happens at the beginning of a song. And I'm like, I don't even know where the hell I'm at right now. You know, if I jump right now, I'm going to fucking break my head or whatever. Oh my gosh. You know? So it's, uh, no, nah, it, I would say for the most part, I, I never notice it. It's, it's fine. You know, it's just kind of. Under the gun, man. Rock and roll. Just got to go with it. Oh, yeah. And, you know, given these current times, you know, you guys are pretty well accepted to be able to play on stage because you've got face coverings on. Yeah, it's perfect. Ah. I mean, it, 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 it covers us up, man. You know, it's like, oh, look at this ugly motherfucker. You know, I don't have to see his face. So you don't get that. You know, it's cool. Ah, it's like everybody, you know, if everybody wore masks in the crowd, you know. <laughs> it'd be kind of interesting though it's more of like an interacting having the crowd wear that, a mask and then we wear a mask that would be cool anybody can get on stage and you know it could be him it could be him you know that's something that uh dave brocky said one time about uh members of gore was that the reason why they made characters was because if anybody either a left or passed away they could be the character would still be there. Yeah. So, you know, that, that, that's cool as hell. You know, I think, I don't know, my opinion, like with, especially with like social media and stuff, it's just like when people start getting very personal, there's nothing wrong with that, but well, okay. I shouldn't say there's nothing wrong with it. The problem I have is just like the mystique is gone. So it's like, if you have a character and the character always stays the character, it, it makes it, just that much cooler you're interested in it you know it's like finding out santa claus you're like ah fuck right he goes to mcdonald's just like i do and i think that's a big thing with kiss you know yeah Yeah. you know you see gene in the makeup and it's gene it's the demon character but you see gene on like you know the amped up version of him like on family jewels or or in any kind of interviews and he's like a completely different person or when they were unmasked you know they're he's yeah. a complete. They were a, almost a completely different acting band. They still wrote some of the same ideal esque songs, but they were still different. Which is that's a pretty cool concept. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's cool, man. I I, I like 
characters. You know, that's why, like, with horror, you know, it's like all the slasher dudes, it just, that's the shit I like, you know, the Jason Voorhees, Myers kind of people, where it's, you know, it's, it's a character, and it makes just, it's more intriguing to some people, I would imagine. I don't know. Definitely. together and right i mean because i you know you said you had one member that was about an hour away from you is everybody based in in the area no with midnight i mean midnight's exclusively uh Athena. i mean that's his it's pretty much his shit you know he writes it he does it and 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 runs in it we're just, you know me myself and ss you know we just come in there and fucking take the show to the new level you know what i mean so it's um he does all the writing and it's pretty much easy. I mean, it's the fucking easiest shit. I just go in there and fucking play the songs, you know? So, um, but that's it. Yeah. He writes it right on. So in that, re- in that regard, um, you said you just go in and play the songs. I mean, is that studio and live or you just, no, I just, I'm, I'm live. Oh, right. Strictly on. live. Yeah. You get two experiences with midnight. <laughs> so you get, yeah, you get the studio stuff and then, the actual live performance, which I've been yep. looking, I, I haven't got a chance to see you all play. Okay. Uh, I planned on coming to the show in Newport yeah. uh, over the summer, assuming it's still happening. I hope it's still happening. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I've uh, got a few other bands that I'm friends with like black knife and stone cutters who were going to be on that show as well. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck yeah. A good time to, to go see everybody. And, yeah. Uh, sure. So I was. I'm totally looking forward to that if it's still happening. I hope it does. Um, so, with 
your other projects. You have uh, Vanek it, itself and Vandalis, which yep. I've listened to most of the catalogs of uh, Vanek, and I've listened to the first album from Vandalis. And okay. I, I dig. So give me some insight on, on both of those. Well, Vanek was, um, I mean, once again, bringing back to the, the horror and stuff like that, it's, 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 I wanted to, I never, at that point, before Vanek, I never created something 100% how I wanted it, and how I saw it, you know, which was cool horror imagery with just fucking rock and roll metal riffs, you know. Um so, I don't know. It was weird because I've been busy since 2012 with Midnight. It's just kind of like it started. I mean, we, we started playing maybe. We, I mean, we never toured in the beginning. We did like a couple one-off shows. And then at some point, we started doing tours. And they were like, hey, this is kind of cool. People actually like this shit, you know. So, we just kept taking it further and further. Um, but at some point, I'm, I'm always writing music. I mean, constantly. I, I just had a concept of a face and some riffs and that's how Vanek was. I just went in the studio and um, we fucking knocked the first album out. It was super quick. And then after I put that out, I mean, it, I just, I just liked it. I enjoyed doing it. I mean, with the imagery, everything, it just got me excited. So I just wanted to keep it going. Yeah. Um, like the first, the first album, you know, just self-titled Vanek with the, the vampire co- cover in the orange and black. It's, it's stark but it says a lot. And then proceeding on going to any of the other albums, how the face is always there, but the imagery, you know, changes a little bit when you get to Dark Season and uh, Tricks and Treats and stuff like that. I dig the the artwork for it. And the artwork, oh, cool. I believe, fits, you know, from what I've got, uh, from what I've listened to. And I actually heard Dark Season first. Okay. So, and, you know, I just, I dig the... I dig the the occult metal, you know. That's, yeah, it's it's weird because like I always see like bands that are associated to horror, like the Typo Negatives or Misfits or you know bands that are kind of just just dodging metal. Now again, there are metal bands, of course, who use the horror imagery, but like you rarely see a band that's based out of that. Like you know, I don't know. It's you know you know what I'm talking about. It's oh, just yeah. like. When you think of Halloween, you're you're it's you don't think of Metallica, Slayer, or Diamond Head, or a, any new wave of British heavy metal or anything like that. So it's kind of like I wanted to take that sound or like ripping guitar stuff with just horror imagery, you know. And I don't know. Absolutely, and with the instrumental tracks and stuff like that, and just like the the wraparounds of songs where you have the the horror music to it, you know, the, the song, the sounds that you would hear in any kind of eighties, uh, horror genre film, yeah, whether it be totally. slasher, whether it be a zombie, you know, then, you know, it's, it's cool. You know, it's, <laughs> Wait, how did that go again, dude? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Killer. Um, cool, man. But yeah, I completely dig that. Um, how does Vanna get together and write then as a band? I mean, uh, do you do all of that? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I do every once in a while. Like, I work. Um, another dude, uh, Vic Vic Stone. He plays oh, guitar yeah. in Vindicator and Volcana, and uh, I mean, he's he's he does a ton of shit too. But um, I'm always we're always talking, and he didn't play on the first record. The first record was just three of us, and I wrote that thing from you know beginning to end. I mean, there were okay. The last song was a Manimal song. And that was a cover. And there was one song a buddy of mine came over and played a riff. I'm like, oh, dude, I love that riff. Let's turn it into a song. So I ended up using that for a Vanek tune. But mostly it's riffs I come up with. Um, unless I'm inspired to do some kind of cover or something like that, you know. Right on. But it's pretty easy. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll write the songs. I, I do full demos. I'll play everything on the demos, do all the drums and everything. And then I'll get, you know get some dudes to go in there and fucking record it with me. Cause I like to play, play live as a band. You know, I think there's something about capturing a moment, you know, instead of just being like, here, I'll send you some files, dude, just play whatever the hell you want over it. You know, it's right. more or less you're, you're in a room and you knock it out. 
But but I, I got to say, aside from me writing the tunes ahead of time, when we go in there and record, a lot of shit sometimes happens. And, you know, Ed, the bass player, might come up with a riff and, you know, he might throw his two cents in there. And same with them. Um, on the first two records, it was Al. And this new one is actually um, Steve, who plays drums in Midnight 2, the live He's been doing it for since 2014, but anyway, um, so it's it's cool. Right on. Um, I believe you know Lemmy has said one time that um, proving yourself live is the real mark of a musician. And yeah, it was. Uh, any five dudes can get together in a room and write an album, but go out and do it. Yeah, absolutely. And I 100 yeah. percent agree with that. So, um, yeah, I mean, Vanek, the the you know the. I haven't had time to really tour or do anything with it too. So it's kind of like, that's another reason why I actually want to get together in the studio and do it just to kind of create some kind of live feel and magic, you know, cause there's no perfect quantity in time drums or samples on stuff. You know, I'm trying to keep it as, um, you know, in the moment as possible. The sounds are in the moment, the playing's in the moment. I think all that matters, you know, very much it does. Uh, yeah. Do you have a favorite uh, song or album that you've written? Um, I, I gotta say, <laughs> I, I hate this too because I always make fun of it when people do this. But oh man, the newest what I wrote is the fucking best. <laughs> Every, this, the, I think everyone new, has said that on the show. <laughs> I, I know, dude, honestly, and like, I hate to say this, but I, I really this this the new Vanek uh, I just finished. I'm really happy with it. Sounds fucking killer, um, and the songs I just really like how it went together it was i mean they sound great you know what i mean it's all about the context you know you can come up with awesome songs then when you put them together it's almost like ah man it's just not as cool as it sounded as this you know just the songs being separate but this one in sequence it it works for me now is this a new vanic album or is this or are you talking like the final chapter what's uh no new a new album It'll, it'll i'll i mean it's done now um, but I'm gonna I'm shooting for, i hope you know October Halloween if the world's still around. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, man? Right. Right. We, I mean, we we're don't... all gonna turn to zombies. Ah, uh, do we have to? I mean, I don't know. Whatever I... how you want to turn it to. <laughs> right. I mean, it. You know, it's just I'm not a zombie guy personally. <laughs> Neither am I, dude. I, I get you know honestly with the whole Walking Dead thing too. I never understood. I never really got into it, just, you know. But I like, you know, the George Romero stuff, just anything else is too much for me. Yeah, I'm not a, yeah, I'm not a big fan of, the, like, the 28 Days Later and stuff like that. But, like, the, the original Nine of the Living Dead, I can do yeah. that. Um, yep. But, like, zombies to me are just kind of meh. They're kind of there, I guess. Yeah. So, I, yeah. Get, I get you. Yeah. Um, do you assign working titles to songs? Uh, yeah, I do, but they're fucking ridiculous. Thank you. Like, <laughs> like shit one and fuck two. And, uh, it's just, I mean, cause a lot, of, I used to like try to give titles and then I would go back and, Hey, where the fuck is that song, man? I can't fucking find it. But like dumber shit's easy for me to remember. And, um, so if I need to find it and give it another title, I can do it. You know, without getting too complicated. So what is the most uh, ridiculous working title you've ever come up with? Oh, man. I don't know. The most ridiculous? Yeah. Vile, Dude. obscene, what, whatever. Oh, man. <laughs> you got me on the spot. I'm trying to think, dude, because my fucking head's crazy, and I don't remember half the shit I come up with, to be honest with you. I don't <laughs> I don't know, dude. I'm going to have to take a rain check on this right question. On. I'm sorry. No, no, it's all good. Uh, because I, you know, I, I, unfortunately, I beat this in, this dead horse here. Uh, in my songwriting, I will come up with such just goofy shit like uh, Schmerzen, which is like yeah, pain. Okay, yeah, and, I know yeah uh, uh, and just come up with like crazy titles and stuff like that where it doesn't necessarily, or, uh, uh, Bo Schlampe, which is actually the English version on my new thing called Evil Bitch. So, yeah, <laughs> I think I've used one of my favorites. Uh, you know, it's I don't know if it's the, the 
grossest or whatever, but I like duck butter. <laughs> I was like duck butter one, duck butter two, duck nice. butter three. You know, it's that sweat that just just lays yes. on your ball sack. I, I, maybe I didn't have to get that fucking detail, but I just thought I'd let you know. That's what you know. That's uh, I'm glad somebody is like answered that truthfully because they're like, no, it's usually just um, a minor uh, seven, you know, and, <laughs> no, it's, and it's like, you know, which is a cool thing, but it's like, eh. <laughs> somebody, or they're like, well, I name it the song that it's most resembling like satisfaction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, is, yeah uh, no. which is cool too. <laughs> but I will, I mean, sometimes like if a song like, you know, well, you know, I'll come up with something that's inspired by another song. I might like, you know, put the name of the you know the band like a deep purple riff or something like that. You know, peep purple. I might say shit like that. You know, nice. That's more like me. I won't be like deep purple and A minor. It'll be like <laughs> peep Dur- purple and fucking fucking a minor. I don't know. Oh, that's actually pretty bad. I don't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 17 or 18 is around the, that age. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, uh, that went, that went crazy. That's too far. That no, too I, far. That, I mean, Hey man, this is a, me- this is a metal show. <laughs> and just like in any other metal shows, pretty much anything goes. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, if you could have written a song or an album from somebody else, what would it be? Um, I can written. You know, there's there's quite a few. That's fine. I mean, I mean, there's there's the albums I, I just grew up just loving. You know, like Kiss. You know, like Love Gun. I mean, it's uh, the the first Kiss album too. It's just like it was just you listen to it and you're like, oh my god, that was like the first thing that really got me ex- excited. You know, so but I would say if I could pick one. Um, an album that I wish I had written. Kill 'em all. Interesting. You know, it's it's. I know it's cheesy because it's Metallica, but I just feel like the guitar tone, the riffs, the songs, the the, the sound is just. I love it. Oh no, you know? no, I agree with you because I actually I modeled our first album off of the mixing of Kill 'em All. Um, mm-hmm. You know. I, be me being a bass player, just hearing those little, little nuances that Cliff does in in certain songs, where it's just like yeah. he does this like little sweet run in Four Horsemen. So no, yeah. I totally get. Yes, I'm. I can go along with that. I totally get that. No, like um, you're saying, like those little nuances. Like every time you listen to it, something new pops up. You know, I mean, it's because it's not a perfectly produced record. You know, you don't have copy paste parts, right? You know, everything's from section to section. There's something different about it. <clears throat> you know, it makes it fucking interesting as shit. Right, or you so, get, or you get those like that one moment at the beginning of Horseman where James and Kirk are just off a tiny little bit. And yeah, it, and it adds human. Yeah, and it's the human the human deal of it, and it it adds a a different layer to the band. I think you know. See, that's the thing. I th- I just felt like that album really at the time, you know, especially it just like it really hit it right. You know, if it would have came out today or something, who knows? I mean, the impact would have been nowhere near what it was. So oh, it's no. just like. But aside from that, I just feel like the sonically and song wise and everything, it just it's it's exactly what I what I like. That's where I see albums. You know, I put it to that regard. You know, because like there there are albums too that I'll nowadays I'll put on and I'll just shut it off right away, even though it might not suck. It's just like well, you know, I'm just not into that. The like either the production or whatever it is. I you know I I see things a certain way that make me inspired and interested probably shouldn't do that but um well you know an interesting thing about this was um on the show last week uh i had said at the in the uh, beginning of the episode that it was uh on may 10th was 37 years that since they started recording on kill em all wow so that's that's awesome <laughs> That's, yeah holy shit you know what i mean oh yeah fucking 37 years ago yeah um wow. 
But the uh, cool thing is, is uh, pretty much master is the top given answer I've noticed for that, okay. for that question, which is a you know pretty good one too. But I agree with kill them all personally. So yeah, I mean, I mean, that's a they're all great. But it's like for me, like the impact. I know right away that album. That was the first one that I heard. That was, uh, I don't know. It just the impact was just great. You know, of course, I you know started listening to the others after that, and they, those were good too. But that one still, it just felt like just real as fuck. Oh yeah, definitely. What Explain what draws you to music? What draws me to music? Yeah. Sorry, I'm Ill- Ill- illiterate. As you can tell, I can barely fucking talk. Oh, dude, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> no, what draws me to music, um, you know, I, I, I'm more, I'm not a, you know, big into the whole, like, I have to look deep into a theme, so it's what I hear. I'll hear something, and right away I'm like, ah, oh, that's it. That's that's what I like. It could be it could be a Manowar song, it could be uh, a Venom song, it could be... It could be anything. It could be fucking Night Ranger. I don't know, dude. I don't. I don't really care. You know, it's just about there's something in the song, the keys, the guitar tone, the drums. But it usually is the music that draws me. So something with the music is going on that's really, you know, drawing my attention. Right um, on. You know, it, like I said, it's always different. Yeah, I mean, it's one I could dig. It's um wherever you find inspiration from, you know, like you said, it didn't have to necessarily be a theme of anything or, but yeah, it's just that feeling each that you get. I can, if that's, I, that's what it sounded like to, you said. Yeah. It's tough for me to sometimes explain. Like a lot of times it's like, where did that come from? It's like, I don't really know. You know, I, I don't know why I like it. You know, I've had people ask me, well, why do you like, I say, I don't really know, man. Like, I don't know why I kill them all. I highly regarded, you know, or is the better one. Because there's Master of Puppets and Ride the Lightning, but for some reason, that one spoke to me first, and it was it had the biggest impression. So Definitely. that's how it is. Like I get drawn in. It could be a picture, you know. Actually, that's what drew me into Iron Maiden. You know, it's like you see those album covers. You're like, what the fuck? Right. I don't even care if this band sucks. I'm still listening <laughs> to them. You know. Well, thankfully, you know, with the artwork, and and I've seen this before, where the artwork looks so good. But it's just like that, that that buying that guitar or buying that car that looks so so good, and then it's a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I know. So many so many times, you know, sold on album covers, and it's just like, what the fuck is this? Is this a joke? Yeah, <laughs> that is the worst because, like, you know, I, I I I like art, so if I see something that looks cool, I, I will just be like, oh, I'll give it a shot. And I've had that happen a couple times. It is a bummer. You know, because being... I don't want to burn the cover because I'm like, ah, oh, the cover's good. That's not the problem. So I just got to get rid of the CD. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, one of the. Uh, I'm not a huge Southern rock fan. I mean, I like it from time to time. But yeah. one of the, to me, one of the biggest, um, like, cover debacles for album art. Is, Molly uh, Hatchet. Yes. <laughs> the Frank Frazetta. The Frank Frazetta. Oh artworks. God, L- I love Frazetta artwork. I, I, yeah. I'm a huge Frazetta fan. Uh, yeah. But then you see that, and you're like, oh, it's the fucking Death Dealer, and it's like, I'm flirting. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Come on, yeah. man. It's funny. I mean, I, I gotta say, I, I like Molly Hatchet, but I can see where you're coming from because I, I thought the same thing. Like, you, you know, would... I, I I heard Molly Hatchet first. And then I remember seeing the cover. I'm like, whoa, this is, is this the same band? You know? Right. Because it, it, you would think they would be somebody like Rainbow or, or, or something Something, like, yeah, something like, you know, like a Maiden or something, you know, but no, they're, uh, they're Southern rock and it's, it's totally cool. But (laughs) yeah, that's funny. Do you listen to yourself musically? Yeah. I mean, I like with Vanek Records, I, I, have no fucking problem with uh listening to a record that you can't buy i mean i'm sure there's stuff that's similar musically um but as far as what i see you know i make the records how i want to hear something for that point in time so i I like to go back it you know tickles my fancy to go back and and listen to it you know a lot of times 
I do that, and then I, you know, to hear the the shitty parts of it, and then I try to learn from it, you know. Right, like uh, phrasing, or whether it be musical or lyrically phrased. I, Absolutely, right. Yeah, and I, I think, think you know, uh, there's a lot of people out there that don't listen to them, or there's only people out there that um, listen to them just to critique them. Like, man, I wish I did that better. Or, yeah, I mean, it's like for like midnight stuff. We're playing that stuff every night, so it's like you know we're on a you know say we're on a thirty day tour or something. It's like you don't really need to listen to it at that point because you're playing the songs or there, you know. But like the stuff like the Vanek stuff, we don't really play. Um, so it's just kind of like I'll listen to it just because it's kind of uh, cool, you know. I forgot about this. Wonder what it would sound like on a stage, you know? Right. Um... So when it comes to writing for Vanek, do you have the uh, cognizance in mind of like the length of album you're trying to hit? Are you, are you, because you do stuff on vinyl, are you trying to keep it around the 40 to 45 minute mark or, or do you cut songs? No, I mean, the Vanek records actually, and I didn't really plan it to be this way, but they've all been pretty much around 30 minutes where they're, bam 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 you know like love gun again talking about kiss i think love gun clocks out at like 26 28 minutes right you know it's just like the songs are great on it um and it it hits you you know simple so with the vanek stuff i'll i'll just write keep writing and writing and writing and then a lot of times what i do is at some point i'll just put them on a cd and change the order around or something and then see how it feels so it's all about, you know, if it's good enough that I, that I have fucking 10 songs with the same riffs or do I, are these mixed up enough to where it sounds like an album, you know? So I'll usually keep writing until I'm, I think it's a point where it's like, okay, I got enough songs that fit like this sound. So and that's for the Vanek stuff. It ends up being 30 minutes for some odd reason, but um, it's what there's works. Really, yeah, I guess. You know, right on. Is there a band that you would want to see that you've never seen? Um, yeah. Or play with, for that matter. Well, play with, yeah. There's there's tons of bands that I would, you know, especially newer bands. You know, just bands have been getting. I mean, we were supposed to do some stuff with Power Trip too. I thought would have been cool. I mean, we bumped into them a couple times just on the road. And, you know, in Texas or something like that. They were at the show and talking and stuff. But I thought it'd be cool to play with those guys, like the music. Of course, the Cro-Mags, too, which, you know, speaking of Power Trip, you know, I know that it's got that similar fucking t- tone and shit. But I love the Cro-Mags. Cro-Mags, that would be cool to fucking jam with, you know? Right on. You know, you've logged the miles on the road, you know. Uh, do you have a favorite city or venue that you like to perform in? Um, no, not really. I mean, I, I dig the festivals. I always like European festivals. Keep it true is always one of my favorites just because it's, it's not huge as fuck. It's not like a Vakken or something where there's hundreds of thousands, you know, a hundred thousand people. Um, keep it true is I think like a 2000 maybe, or maybe a little bit more. I don't know, but I like that. Like the venue is, well, the venue is actually kind of shitty, but it's just more about the vibe, I guess. Right. I like that. But but I guess was your question more about a club, a venue itself? Yeah, or a, or a city or you know yeah. s- somewhere where you like to visit and you like to play there as much as you can. Yeah, Los Angeles is always great for us. I mean, it's I mean, there's it's usually the bigger cities, but I would say Los Angeles or <clears throat> New York. Right on. Is and, you, are you always great? Right. And I've, you know, playing in LA is always kind of a, you know, I've done it once and it's, it's a weird town to me. It is anyway. It's like, yeah, oh it's, yeah. you know, everybody's out there for, you know, they're out there because of, you know, movies, music, TV, you know, all of these things. And people really take an interest in all of those. Yeah. You know, at least at, at the the show, the one show I played out there. So, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, it's it's different, man. It's again, I, I, 
I'm, I live just outside Cleveland. Cleveland's not big to begin with, so it's a small city. You know, you don't have to deal with too much bullshit, you know, aside from snow, but I don't give two fucks about snow. I mean, my brothers, you know, my family has snowmobiles and shit, so I got, you know, I'll snowboard. I got things to do. Um, but, yeah, Los Angeles is definitely different in a, in a sense if you live there, you know. But it's going there to play a gig. It's cool as hell, you know. I Like, the shows are always great. And there's always gigs going on there. I guess that might be cool. But if you can drive there and get there in, within five hours. Right, yeah. It takes forever to drive anywhere. Yes, it does. And it, But the but the uh, the traffic is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'm not used to that. I don't like <laughs> sitting in traffic. No, it, that that's the part that sucks about playing there, I think, is yeah. the traffic. Yeah. That and uh, depending on where you're at in the city, you have to repark the car or the van or whatever every couple of hours. <laughs> right. That yep. sucks. Uh, so let's hear some more about you, about Vanek. You know. Sure. Uh, do you have a favorite film? Uh, yeah. I mean, I like. Um, shit, I like all the Friday the Thirteenth. Well, Jason Goes to Hell is. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, I don't know that one. I for some reason I try, I try every time I put it on. I'm like, ah, I just don't get it. Um, but I love the Friday the Thirteenth franchise. You know, between that and Salem's Lot, um, awesome. those are those are great ones. You know? Awesome, yeah. Um, I like the Friday the Thirteenth stuff for sure. You know, yeah. I, I could really get get behind some of that. Uh, yeah, it's cool because they're all like, you know, you know, they have the same, you, you know, it's the same killer after the same kids or whatever, but it's like they're different in some ways. You know, it's like the first one he's not even in. The second one, he's got a bag over his head. The third one, you know, he gets the mask and then and so forth. So they all kind of build and, you know, it's it's funny because I, a lot of times the first or second album of a band you like the best or first or second movie but i feel like the friday the 13th it's not that way you know it's i like the third and the fourth those are my favorites right on yeah um i think it's, is it the fourth one with Corey feldman yeah yeah where he's like who am i <laughs> die, die, yeah. yeah where he, where he yeah. shaves his head and, and everything yeah it's good stuff <laughs> getting a hardcore at the end oh yeah like because he looked like him as a kid, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> do you have a favorite food? Pizza. How I mean, you... I, th- that's that's the type of food I can just you know eat anytime, anywhere. You know. Yeah. Uh, do you do you like it a certain way? Is it like a, a big like everything like a supreme pizza? Or are you no nah. like meat lovers pizza or. No, I'm traditional, man. I like cheese. I like pepperoni. I'm fine with that. You know, I'll I'll, I'll eat whatever the hell, though. I mean, I, if it's there, if there's a Hawaiian pizza with pineapple, I know people don't like that, but I don't give a shit. I'll eat it. But, I mean, cheese and pepperoni are fine. You got a favorite uh, pizza joint up in up in the Cleveland area you like oh, to go dude, to? Oh, there's dude, yeah, there's a place called Angelo's Pizza. Um, it's not far from me, but it's really good, really good stuff. But even even like I'll go to Pizza Hut and it'll still do its job and get me. Yeah, so. it gets the job done. Yeah. Yep. I get you. Um What is your ultimate jam? Uh the ultimate just to sit back and just listen to. The uh, the thing that always whatever media you have, whether it's vinyl, MP three, C D, cassette even that always finds its way into your player. What, what is it? Uh, dude, I like the first Ted Nugent album, so, the self-titled. So it's like with the doctor order, that's like hearing that too, and I can, any format, anywhere, it's like I love it. It's great, great shit, dude. Cool guitar playing, songs are awesome, vocals are great. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right on. I'm going to have to look over my shoulder. He's been mentioned two weeks in a row on the show. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. No shit. It, well, but there's probably bad things, too. I'm sure people are probably, you know. <laughs> oh, Nick, good uh, Nick last week was talking about how he uh, he was like 13 or 14 years old, and they opened for him. And he asked uh, if Ted would sign his wallet, and he's like, no. <laughs> really? Yeah. 
Wow. And he's like, hey, he's a dick, but I love his music. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I it's think that's what everybody I, says. Yeah, I heard the opposite. Uh, well, you know you know Jarvis, right, from Night Demon? Uh, not personally. I know of Night Demon, though. Yeah, he's. Uh, it's funny. He was telling me a story because he met him a while back. He actually invited him. He's like, hey, check out this riff I got. And he started fucking jamming. And I guess he kept playing the whole fucking song and wouldn't stop. Whoa. <laughs> but he said it was super cool. You know, it wasn't like he was a total cock about anything. You know, you I've know. heard people, you know, you hear you hear both. I try not to meet oh, yeah. anybody because I don't want to be disappointed. Definitely. You know, still, um, one of the tightest bands I've ever seen live, you know, was was him. You know, him, oh, yeah? him with the, with like... Uh, Derek St. Holmes and all oh. that fucking ridiculous live. Crazy. When did you see him? Uh, probably 2011, 2012. Oh, okay. And that was the yeah, only... that's right. He pops in with them every once in a while, right? Oh, yeah. Well, they were doing the, uh, they were doing like the fair shows, like the state fairs that summer. Okay. Yeah. And they were free shows and that was like original lineup kind of deal. Wow. Crazy shit. It was so cool. good. Um, See, I've never seen that. I've never seen... Well, let me think about that. Yeah, I don't know, because I saw Ted Nugent open for Kiss on the Farewell Tour, like, in 2000. But I don't know if Derek... I don't think Derek St. Holmes was in the band. No, I don't think he was at that time. Yeah. Yeah, he... No. I think he came in, like, a couple of years before the one that I saw him on, which is, okay. like I said, like, 2011, 2012-ish. Oh, Okay. So, right on. For sure. Um, so do you have a guilty pleasure? Guilty pleasure. Uh, I don't know, man. I like to stand proud for everything I do, dude. You know what I mean? So I was feeling guilty about it. Meh, you know, not really. Right on. You know, so I don't know if I really have anything that's, I don't know. You could probably we could get in a conversation deeper. I could be like, "Oh yeah, by the way, I like that." You're like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> no, I'm I, sure. I don't know. Fair enough. I mean, that's a you know, that's a that's a way to do it. You know, you like what you like, and so you you yeah. stand up and say, "Hey, I like that." I get yeah. you. Total cool. Um, do you have a spinal tap moment? Every day, you know, <laughs> I, I feel like it. If you're a true musician, it is every day. <laughs> Like, like, uh, like today, yeah, I did have a spinal tap fucking moment today, dude. I had my keychain, which fucking has a million keys on it. Cause you know, I got my studio keys here, a cars, motorcycle, whatever. Uh, and I was just trying to open up the door and every key on my keychain was the wrong key. And there was one key inside the house that was the right key, but it was inside the house, so I couldn't get to it. Oh, so shit. I had to go <laughs> I had to go around the front. And I go around the front of the house, and I go open up the screen door, and that was locked. And it's never locked. We, I never fucking lock a fucking screen door. <laughs> so I had to just pull it open, and luckily one of the keys opened the front door. But that was kind of spinal tap. Yeah, it really the, is. It's like the it's key like, was just right there on the other side of the door. You could probably see it too. <laughs> yeah, no, I could. I, you're absolutely. I was. I looked through it and I'm like, oh, it's fucking right there. I could literally, if I punch a hole through the the glass, I could get it. You know, that's like uh, locking your keys in your car, and you see them either a in the ignition or in. You know, some people put them in the cup holder, which is always yeah. a bad idea. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's like seeing them there, and you're just like, if if I could just get them right, they're right fucking there, you know. Man, that feeling, dude, it it's sucks. Insane. Yeah, <laughs> uh, when in doubt, uh, go to go get a hammer. The hammer it was it, they use like a, a coat hanger if you have one handy. Oh yeah, I just happen to have this coat hanger in my pocket. Let me fuck right. that out so I can get the keys. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> what is your greatest <laughs> achievement as a musician? Of making an album. I think the fact I got to the point where I could fucking make an album that I see in my head and translate it and put it on a CD record <clears throat> or a fucking cassette, that's that's the, my greatest achievement. You know, I was able to do that. You know, it's even better now that I could take it and people like it or I could play it on a stage and people come see me you know so it's like but it starts from there man 
I've done some cool shit, but that to me is the greatest achievement. Yeah, it's a it's a rewarding factor. It's like you um, you have this moment where it comes to fruition, and you're like, wow. It's like it, birthing a child. The cool thing is, it's like a gig. It's not a gig because a gig's over with. You play it, you move on to the next gig. Even though it was a great gig, it could have been really, you know, 10,000 people or whatever, but you're still going to the next gig. And it might be 20 people. It might be 2,000. Who knows? But I think when you do a record, when you do your first one, it's like that excitement before you do it. And then once you have it in your hands, and then it's forever. It's there. You know, it's recorded. It's, it's, you always have it. You can always go back and listen to it. So that's, a, it's an awesome achievement. Oh, yeah. You know? It's, uh, yeah, it's, you know, 100 years from now when we're all gone, it's still there. Yep. And who knows, in 100 years, we might be the people who who are the classical music people, you know? Yeah. Where, where people oh listen. Oh, my God, these pussies listen to Possessed. Jesus <laughs> Christ, what a bunch of wimps. Wait till they hear this shit. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, got a couple more questions. Um, cool. And I'm going to start a new feature with you today. Cool. Um, this is the fan question of the week. Hopefully fan uh, people will still send in questions so I can ask. But Vince, Vince asks, you have to choose the Munsters or the Adams Family? The Munsters. Yeah, I like the Adam's yes. Family, the Monsters. I would definitely say the Monsters. Oh, yeah. I, I, just that theme song in general is just is fucking killer. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's so good that Weezer, you know, copied it a little bit, too, in, in Hash Pipe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, pretty, yeah, yeah. it's pretty damn close. It's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, uh, cool. <laughs> and I will be in contact with Vince, who asked that question, to get him a Metal Forge patch and a couple of stickers. So oh, killer. awesome, awesome for him. Um, Thanks Vince. Appreciate it. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Vince. I will be shooting you a message. Um, so the last question for the forge is this, if heaven or hell exists, what do you want to hear when you arrive to where you think you're going? Uh, Rodney James deal, right? Yeah, <laughs> the Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath, heaven and hell. Oh wait, heaven and hell. Yeah, oh, I got you. if heaven or hell exists, what what do you want to hear when you think you, where you think you're going? Um, let's see. Hmm. Wow, that's deep, dude. That's really deep. I'm just trying to be honest with that because it, it could be. I could name a song right now. But I just don't think that would be the one that would be like, I might not say that a week from now. Right. You know what I mean? So right now, oh, fuck. I don't know. Stranglehold? <laughs> Basic as he it does may refer be. To, dude, he refers to it as the greatest riff ever written. You know, maybe it is. It's eight uh, it, it's, minutes long, and I'm never bored every time I hear it. Oh yeah, it's it's, you know? it's the greatest. It, it really, yeah. you know, it really stands the test of time for fucking. Dude, sure. I mean, I remember that. I remember that hearing that. You know, that riff as a little kid. I mean, my dad would play that and uncles and shit. So it's like I'd hear it, and then I remember hearing it years later. You know, after I started playing music and stuff, I'm like, man, this this fucking song is just killer. You know what I mean? You hear it your whole fucking life. I, at least for me, I don't oh, think yeah. of it. I'm and sure there's people like, oh, my God, that fucking song again. Oh, you know? I'm sure there Not are. Not me. Yeah. But it, to me, it's one of those songs that's just like, you can, you can know how to play it. You can watch Ted play it and play it exactly like Ted but you will never play it just like Ted. I think it's nope. a matter of the, the amps that, he, that he's using, the Birdland. His hands, man. Yeah, it's his hands. hands. Yeah. That, yeah. I'm sure he'll tell you that, too. You know, it's like the hands. It's all about the hands. Definitely. You know. All right. But it's, you're right, though, because it's super simple. It's just. It's oh, all, yeah. I it's mean, it's. Fucking straight up jam. But it's. But he makes it sound. Yeah, it's that whole thing. It's like, it's a wall of sound, honestly. 
Yeah. Cool. For 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 sure it is. It's like holy shit. I feel you. Dude, Vanek, thank you for calling in. Um, before we leave, um, tell everybody how to you know get a hold of you, whether it's the, to buy albums, uh, catch you all on shows. Where where can they find Midnight Info, Vanek Info, uh, you know the Vandalis Info? Where can they find all this? Yeah, I mean, dude, it's the easiest way nowadays is probably fucking Facebook, you know, mm. shit like that. I mean, Midnight Stuff. I think it's easy to come across, you know, we, we, there is a actual like, ah, oh, fuck. I don't, I don't know the, the, the address offhand, but I can email you all the links and everything. Definitely. Um, um for um, all the merchandise and stuff like that, shirts, records, Vanek stuff. I have a band camp page. I, I usually have every, I have a bunch of stuff. I'll put like personal things up there too. Right. You know, like used underwear, socks, Woo, whatever you want. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> it's up for grabs, dude. Which is vanic.bandcamp.com. I see. Yeah, that's correct. And it looks like midnight is midnight hyphen Ohio dot bandcamp dot com. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Dude. Yep. It it's been an awesome interview. I appreciate you calling in. Uh um, no, thank you. Do you have any shout outs you want to give to anybody before you go? Fuck everybody, man. Anybody who <laughs> wants to listen. Anybody who wants to give my shit a chance music you know all my music dude thank you i mean that's a shout out to you i mean fuck I and mean, it's a generic as fuck answer but no I mean, dude i appreciate it 100 percent. you know, know it's like i said i heard dark season first and i was just like this is really fucking good because it's not like it's not you know the same metal that you hear constantly you know, cool. it doesn't take it. It's just, you know, metal is metal, but to me, it's one of those things where it's just like, it's a refreshing take on metal. Yeah, I, I, that, that, you know, maybe it's the imagery. It's just my twisted mind going into well, music form, you know? Plus, I like occult metal. I've I've come to realize lately, so <laughs> more so cool. than you know, it, it it's a King Diamond thing. I think you know it's it's very, you know, it reminds me of King Diamond and stuff, and I dig that a hundred percent. You know, no, I love King awesome Diamond. Awesome shit, so. dude. Thank you, man. Much appreciated. Really appreciate it, dude. Thank you as well. Um, but yeah, we'll see you further on up the road. Hopefully, this summer I'll be able to catch you at, you all with Midnight. Uh, at the uh, Newport, Covington area of the of the Kentucky Cincinnati area, you know, and Sweet. fuck yeah, dude, I appreciate you. Yeah, have a good one, man. You be safe and uh, you know, keep having fun, dude. Don't let anybody tell you not to. Thank you again. All right, cheers, bud.
Since 1973, Tattoo Charlie's has been an established body modification studio in Kentucky. Featuring world-renowned artists and piercers, currently with locations on Preston Highway and in Lexington. A staple point in the tattoo community. Learn more at TattooCharlie's.com. Set up your appointment today at 7904 Preston Highway. Our tattoos are done while you wait. Hey, are you all in a band? Do you need merch for shows? By now I'm sure you've seen all the Metal Forge patches that are available, along with many more. Well, the printer I use for those is UKR Patcher. Check them out on Facebook and Etsy. They do awesome custom work and for extremely affordable prices for any band budget. Check them out at UKR Patcher on Facebook and Etsy. Hey everyone, do you play tabletop games like D&D and Pathfinder? Well, hit up Eric at Imagination Studios. Uh, they do custom printing for all your minis for gameplay. Don't forget, they're a licensed Reaper, Artisan Guild, and more printer and dealer. Hit up ImaginationStudios502.com for more info. That's ImaginationStudios502.com. E-M-A-G-I-N-A-T-I-O-N Studios502.com. <laughs> 